It's time for Triangulation, the show where we get together with some of the most interesting people in technology and spend, the, in my opinion, the best hour of the week chatting together. And we've got a great one today. Cyber Junkies here. C Junkie, CJ, Mark Rogers, the principal security researcher at Cloudflare, but a guy who's known world round uh, for uh, white hat hacking, gray hat hacking, any kind of hacking you want. We were just talking before the show about hacking the Tesla. Uh, he's part of uh, his head of security, if you believe this, at DEF CON. That's got to be the toughest job in the world. Sure, just invite a thousand hackers to your conference and then run security. Hey, Mark, try welcome. Thank you. Uh, try 20,000 and please don't break anything. <laughs> Everybody, I haven't been to DEF CON, but everybody I know who goes says, do not bring your computer, do not bring your phone, uh, because you will be on the wall of sheep if, if you're not careful. So it's nice, true. So nice to meet so nice to Are you kind of now, you mustn't have had a lot of sleep over the last few weeks because of uh, uh, cloud bleed. I'm actually on my first break since the end of that. Uh, we ran through until last weekend and then sort of all fell over and ran out of steam. Well, I'm very grateful that you could spend some time with us. We should mention uh, Cloudflare, your, uh, your co the company you work for, will be an advertiser starting next week on uh, the show. But that doesn't make any change to how we're going to talk about this. But uh, just so people know, the disclaimer is important, I think. Uh, and actually, we're thrilled because Cloudflare is awesome. And I've known John Graham coming for years, and uh, and it's a, a wonderful company. Let's let's start with Cloudbleed. We won't spend a lot of time on it <clears throat> because uh, there's so many other things to talk about. In fact, I'm wondering if you still uh, assert that uh, Korea did not hack Sony, which I think is an <laughs> a contrarian <laughs> point of view. We could talk about hacking the Tesla. There's lots to talk about with this guy. So uh, uh, now you feel like Cloudbleed's wrapped up. I, I think it's going to be a while longer before Cloud Bleed's completely wrapped up. But I think the incident itself is now wrapped up. Yeah. We had, at one point, teams of 30-plus people on the ground working 24-7, mitigating any, any customer data we found was tracked down, analyzed, and purged. Any opportunities to purge on scale were, were pursued. We established relationships with just about every single search engine you can imagine and did everything we could. It's, it was tough because it's, like it's a really hard bug to deal with. Um, it's, it was found by one of the world's best bug hunters and declared to us. I think Tav Tavis Wormady, of course, is the, the one you're t the bug hunter you're talking about at Google, was somewhat critical of, uh, I thought Cloudflare handled it as, as absolutely impeccably, given the scope of the problem. And I think Google handled it very well. They cleared their caches right away before they said anything publicly. But he was fairly critical. I think still is a fairly critical of your response. I'm not entirely certain where we went wrong with Travis. I think the initial engagement, you know, Twitter's not the most ideal place to be notified yeah. of something that's critical, but <laughs> it got it eventually got the right people and we got the right people on it. The next question, though, is what do you do in those situations and how do you keep everything under control so that you don't have um, a data spill problem where all this data was out there and the public was suddenly notified and became a big scramble? How do you get all the right people in place and get enough information. And what is enough information? Yeah. And so we were trying to picture all of this and pull it together. At the same time, quite rightly, Project Zero was being aggressive about the timeline. They saw public data was exposed. And they wanted to take action. I think what was a little bit regrettable was in the haste, I think communication lines broke down a little bit because Tavis decided that it was necessary to disclose after six days. We did our best to get everything cleared up. But you know, we weren't able to get everything done. However, it was obvious that this was going to be an ongoing operation, so we just shifted gears and then took, took the long-term approach and spent the next week and a half constantly purging data until we were happy the majority of it had been removed. And, uh, f you know, for people who are new to this, I point you to Security Now, Twit, many of our other shows we've talked. Uh, we talked, in fact, with Nick, uh, your head of uh, uh, crypto, on uh, the new screensavers a week ago. I think we've covered it pretty well, what happened and, and so forth. Uh, the follow-up question is, do you have any evidence that any of this information uh, was you know, acquired by any bad actors? I mean, of course, the, the information that was leaked is totally random. Uh, so you wouldn't even, I guess there's no way really of knowing, right? But do, do we see any evidence of bad, bad effects, side effects from this? 
nothing leaves no footprints. So there's always a chance to find some stuff out. And especially when you've got a fo- bunch of folks who used to be hackers, we're always pr- pretty good at turning stones over and looking in the, the darker places of the internet. And so we immediately turned into a, a small group doing that. We were scouring the dark markets. We were checking right. for indications. We were also reproducing in our own heads. Okay, if I was going to use this to do bad, how would I do that? What are the steps that I would take? And then which of those steps would leave a mark and how can that mark be detected? And so we then ran mass scale analysis of every request, every packet we'd received from uh, September 2016 through to February 2014 and looked at the proportions for the sites that were triggering these leaks. And by measuring that, we were able to see a pretty constant rate of access. That rate of access told us that no one was hammering this because the nature of the bug meant if you wanted to get meaningful data, you would have to go back to a page and you'd have to keep hitting it. Because the first time you get it, you get a bunch of Cloudflare headers. The second time you get it, you get a bunch of bits of data from one customer. So the third time you hit it, you get some more data. So in other words, to really do something harmful with this, you're going to sit there sucking down as much of the data as possible, producing loads and loads of hits. And you would notice that. Anybody would notice that. They'd see that in their logs. Exactly. And so what we did was we went back through our logs to analyze and make sure, did we miss anything like that? Right. Good. So, so, I mean, this is as (laughs) given the bug, which was horrendous, uh, and not, and I don't think your fault, uh, but uh, nevertheless, you know, it's as bad, about as bad as you can get. It sounds like there was very little damage done, and and so, and I think you guys did a remarkable job. I will say that uh, cleaning this up. With, I I know others disagree, but <laughs> I think you did a great job. And the, really, will, the, the proof is in the pudding. Yep. So yeah, we're incredibly proud of the, the forty minute notification to resolution. I think that's a gold standard that most you companies bet. strive for. Yeah. What we're not proud of is the fact that the impact to our customers was not something we could immediately quantify. It is going to go on for a while as customers look at the architecture of their systems and work out how this could have affected them. And that's not something that any security professional wants to find being responsible for. I want to be able to go to my customers and say, this is how I hurt you and this is how it's never going to happen again. Right. So this one's always going to be a tough one for us. I think in the long run this uh, this does not hurt Cloudflare's uh, reputation mostly because uh, uh, you know this is what happens when you go when you put a lot of traffic through a a, 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 a choke point uh, at yep. any time. There's always this risk, and there are good reasons why you use Cloudflare for you know uh, CDN for DDoS mitigation things like that, and you need to do it this way. So uh, I think this is just concomitant. This kind of a risk is concomitant with doing this, but you handled it as best as well as anybody could handle it. So.